Hi guys, this is my channel about home brewing and today we're doing ale yeast versus lager yeast. So guys, these two beers was kindly sent to me from Ekdunges Brygghus. This is his Ekdunges Amarillo and it's a clone recipe from the Uppe Gårds Amarillo. The original, it's quite a nice beer. Uh, haven't had it fresh from the brewery, but I tasted it a few times from uh, the shop Systemolaget, the Swedish shop, the only Swedish shop who are allowed to sell alcohol, at least over 3.5%. So it's not a very hoppy beer, but it's uh, quite of a easy drinking, refreshing beer. And the Ektungens. Amarillo is a clone on that, but he did a mix on it. He split the batch up in two 10 liters buckets and he fermented the Midsommar Lager with Saf Lager 3470 and he fermented the Ale with SO4. SO4 is the same yeast the original brewers use and he also changed up the fermentation schedule. So this is a cold fermented beer and this is a hot fermented beer. I also have the recipes and the uh, fermentation schedule. So we're gonna go through that as well. But I can tell you it's a simple grain bill. Just Pilsner malt and some uh, Crystal 100 and for hops it's only Amarillo. So we're gonna get those into a glass or yeah into a glass each, two glasses, and see what we can pick for difference. This has been sitting in the fridge next to each other. They have been chilled since I got them, but I got them out two days ago to do this video, and I tipped one of them over. Um, and these are uh, bottle conditioned, so I wanted to let them sit again. So this has been sitting for two days now, one day at 0.5 degrees Celsius, almost as freezing to let them cool down. I was cool crashing a beer, so yeah. Just put the in the fridge behind me. And the last day, or last 24 hours, they have been sitting side by side at 8 degrees Celsius in a beer fridge. So just in case if Michael Bernlind, yeah, asked. So, same temperature. So, ah, maybe you want to look at the labels before we pour. So, here you have the two labels side by side. The Missoma Lager and Ekdungens Amarillo. Original against the clone. Okay, so the lager is a little bit more fermented out. Let's start by pouring the ale. As this is bottle conditioned, I'm gonna keep an eye on the sediment in the bottle. So, label out. Try to give it a gentle pour. Okay, I'm gonna end it there. It's a saw coming. It's a nice looking yellowish beer. Yellowish hint of orange to it, more a light orange, yellow to orange. Uh, not much of a head there, have a white foam. Okay, and uh, yeah, we have this beautiful little Swedish colored band here. So I'm gonna put that on the Missomalager, so we know which is which. Okay. Nice smoke there. Let's get it into a glass. Pours lovely. Okay. So I watched out for the sentiment. Same color, a little bit of head there. Gonna 
mark it so we don't forget it. With the Swedish. I really like the uh, extra work there on the labels, really appreciate that. It's really Miss Summary. Miss Summary is a Swedish tradition, a Swedish festivity. Uh, it's, it's full of weird stuff, you should check that out. Come to Sweden, I think it's about 21st of July, something like that. Come to Sweden, go to a midsummer gathering and uh, yeah, you will see some sick stuff that we Swedes are, are up to. We won't go into that today, but uh, yeah, we're dancing around a big uh, stack to the ground. Yeah, okay. Comment down below if um, you're not a Swede and uh, know what we're talking about. No, please don't. Let's stay with the beer. So, uh, same color. This is a little bit fruity. Not a massive hop kick, nor have the original, I must say. I was thinking of doing the clone against the original, but um, yeah, I put the question out there when I did the unboxing of the beer mail in another video, when I tasted another beer mail beer. Yeah, and uh, you guys said that you would prefer the ale yeast versus the lager, so that's why I'm doing it. And I also think that's more fun. So, let's start this over. Keep it together, doctor. Yeah, uh, citrusy maybe. Orangey. Yeah, maybe a tad of alcohol as well. Not much. Okay, let's go for the lager. So the lager is marked. It's different. Doesn't smell as much. Ain't as fragrant as this is, the ale one. It's cleaner. Yes, it's, uh, it's the same, it has the um, like orange notes to it. But it's, it's cleaner, not as fruity. And content and alcohol in that. Maybe I can't in this one either. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the, let's start with the lager. Um, as I think it might be cleaner in flavor, so we're gonna start that first. So, cheers guys. Have you ever done such a recipe with uh, lager versus ale yeast? I've done an ale yeast versus baker yeast when I did a split batch. Uh, I will put a, a card up and a link down below to that video. And I'm also planning to come back to that experiment because I have been aging those bottles, or call it condition, have been placed in the fridge, also side by side, Michael, for a very long time now. So we're going to come back to those and uh, yeah, see if we can pick out if something has happened to them after a long con cold condition. But today is about the uh, beers from Ektungens Brygghus. You do have at least an untapped page, I will put a link to it down below. But yeah, let's start with the lager. Uh, It has tons of flavor. Um, doesn't lay. It doesn't taste like um, like a crisp lager. It 
it's not super uh, clean, crisp. Of course, it's also the Amarillo hops, but uh, we're gonna have a look at the uh, fermentation temperature. But It doesn't have any like major off flavors, but it ain't that clean crisp that you would expect from a lager. It's really nice beer though, just a little bit more like fruity than expected. Okay, so the ale one, I'm gonna go back and forth, just wanted to try that. The ale one. Someone is messaging me. So, the ale one. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go back and forth between them, but let's do the ale one. Cheers. Mm? No, there's no alcohol taste to it. Mm. This one tastes like a bigger beer, much heavier in the mouth, much greater mouthfeel, really like thick in comparison. This did ferment out a little bit more, but no major difference between them in alcohol according to the bottles, that is. So this has much more flavor, but it's it's smoother in a kind of way. Really, really nice. I think this is much more flavorful than the original. The original is uh, cleaner, crisper, but uh, this one has much more flavor. The original, the Uppegård Amarillo, is one of those beers that uh, often are recommended for people who don't drink craft beer, like a, what you say, start beer? No, that's not the correct word, but like an introduction beer, yeah. I don't think this is in the same as the original. But I think for those of us who uh, prefer flavorful beers, might like uh, the clone better than the original. So we're a good job there. Ekdunges Brygghus. Robert is uh, the name of the brewer. Yeah, I know I got this right this time. Okay, so if I were to choose one, you know already, I choose this one. Uh, maybe because it's, I think it's better fermented. I'm all about yeast and fermentation. And uh, I think this one is the better fermented beer, the ale one. Not that uh, the lager is a bad beer. I just think I prefer the the ale one. So oh, yeah, uh, as I said, a little bit fuller. A little bit fruitier. Maybe I was 
hard on the lager because it ain't bad. Like I said, no off flavors. It's really fruity, more fruity than I would expect, but I still like it. It's a good beer and also this one. So uh, before I emptied out both of them, let's go through the recipe. And uh, the recipe also goes up on my Patreon page in the Dr. Hans recipe book in the uh, yeah beer mail section. It's actually another section than the Dr. Hans recipe. I have a section with beer mail and then I have a big book with my recipes on my Patreon site for, for the patrons. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the Amarillo Ale and Midsommar Lager. It's a 20 liter batch. And uh, an OG of 1060. It was used Pilsner malt 5.4 kilos and Crystal 100 250 grams. I'm sorry guys, I know I promised that I would be better to put everything in far and height and uh, ounces and yeah, pounds, everything. I think I need to print out like a sheet chart they call it Latund in Swedish and uh, that would translate to a lazy dog if you're not Swedish and there is a word for it that is as sick please comment down below Latund lazy dog like a sheet sheet like a chart yeah I need any of those it's, it's, if someone has a good sheet chart, if you understand me. Uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, uh, grams in ounces, kilos to pounds, which I can put like everywhere around me in my pockets and all over here. Maybe I should start shooting more in here because it's uh, getting real cold, so I won't shoot as much outside. Yeah, if you have it. Comment down below, send me it, so I will be better. <sighs> yeah, and I straight off again. Sorry, back to the recipe. So, we start over. Uh, 20 liter batch to start with, which is going to split up into two buckets, but uh, 5.4 kilos of Pilsner malt, um, 250 grams of Crystal 100, and this was mashed hop with 10 grams of Amarillo. And... Uh, in the boil, 60 minutes, he added 14 grams of Amarillo. At 30 minutes, he added 14 grams of Amarillo. At 25 minutes, he added 14 grams of Amarillo. 14 grams is a half ounce. So maybe you can calculate through, through that. Uh, 20 minutes, he added 10 grams. 50 minutes, he added 10 grams also. 5 minutes, he added 6 grams. This is a really strange recipe. And add flame out 34 grams of Amarillo. And then he separated the wort into two buckets, 10 liters each. And one he used Saffel SO4. And that's what fermented at 22 degrees. And that's this one. I think 22 is a little bit on the hot side, maybe. Uh, I wouldn't ferment it at 22 if I weren't to ferment it under pressure. I know that um, I think the original is fermented at 22, but uh, when you have such a big amount of wort, you're always fermenting under pressure because there's gonna be a lot of pressure from all of the wort. So even if brewers Breweries don't say they are fermenting under pressure. The amount of wort makes a very big pressure. Yeah, you understand. Hope I hope hope you understand. Or I will comment down below and I will try to describe it better. So I really think that maybe you should have fermented at twenty or starting at eighteen, something like that. Normal normal ale temperature for me is like eighteen. And uh, yeah, I will ramp it. Uh, 
And I think because when it warms up like this, you're starting to get more of the flavor. And uh, yeah, I would have preferred it a little bit cleaner, I think. Now I'm picky, but uh, if someone sends me beer mail, you know, it costs a lot of money to send beer for reviews. I want to be honest as so honestly, it might hurt, but uh, yeah, you know, if you send me beard, you know, you will get an honest review. Uh, yeah, and they, it was dry helped with 20 grams of Amarillo. And the other bucket, the lager, uh, he used Saf Lager W3470. I don't know. Did I say that correct the first time? I don't know, but it's the Saflager W3470. And it was fermented at 10C for 7 days and then 22C for 10 days. And this also were dry hopped with 20 grams of Amarillo. It didn't say how much yeast he used. If I were to use dry yeast, 10 liters, I would use a pack of ale yeast and I would use two packs of lager yeast because of the low fermentation temperature. But the ramping up to 22C on this one surely helped it because it I can't uh, find any like sulfur, something like that. But maybe he has used one pack, so he should have used two packs. Uh, Robert from Ekdunges Bruggers, please uh, comment down below on how much yeast you used. I think th these are sound good recipes. And uh, I think they are worth trying out. Simple, clean, good recipes. But I would uh, ferment this at a lower, maybe 20, maybe 18 to start with. And for this one, I think uh, maybe more yeast. I guess he used a pack. Please comment down below so we can uh, see what actually happened. But I would suggest, because I think. It sounds okay uh, with your fermentation schedule, but uh, maybe it just need more yeast. And now it may sound like I'm complaining over the beers, but I ain't. Because they were both good beers, but m like most good beers, they can be improved. And I think uh, the recipe is quite weird. Uh, not the... Uh, the malt, but the hop schedule, I think it's quite weird. And I don't think it has to be that complex. But uh, yeah, it, it uh, makes good beers, but I think it's over complex. And I can't see uh, the reason for that. But now I feel that I'm starting to rambling. So guys, if you also want to send beer mail, you will find my contact information down in the description box. Drhansbrewer at gmail.com. There you have it. Please subscribe to my channel. It really helps out. And uh, I have more content and recipe on my Patreon page. And there's always all of my other videos in the back catalog. So guys, cheers and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out. I'll, ah, let's take the log.